This is a video about precise point positioning. Precise point positioning is a new option in Carlson Survey GNSS release 2.1.3. Um, and it's a separate module, so you have to order it separately if you want to use it. Um, let me first explain what it is about, and then we'll look at the option in the software itself. So, um, precise point positioning, it'll work for every GNSS receiver, so there's nothing required on the, uh, on the hardware side. So it'll work with the Carlson BRX5 or BRX6, um, basically on every single or dual frequency receiver. It doesn't require any, any reference network or, or known base, it, it works autonomous. So you put up the receiver and the, obs the observation time should be at least uh, two hours. Uh, you put it on a tripod, so it, it's really a static technique. It's not it's not used for for kinematic or uh, or stop and go. And then the software will use uh, precise satellite orbits and clock corrections to get an accurate result. And the accuracy could be on the even on the centimeter level, if your observation time is long enough, and if the quality of your your data is uh, is good enough. Um, uh, the use of precise point positioning would, for instance, be in an area where you don't have any any known points or you know core stations or a, a reference network. So you are in the middle of nowhere, and you need to have a couple of of precise points. Then uh, it'll take some time to set it up, at least at least two hours per point. But then you uh, you can really create a couple of really excellent high accuracy points for your uh, for the rest of your survey however there is a point to be aware of that the uh, precise positioning result is not on the local datum so it is not on uh, NAD 83 if you are in the US or ETRS if you are in Europe AGD if you are in, uh, in Australia it's on the uh, international terrestrial reference frame so um, that means the uh, the points, the, the precise points from the, from this technique, they have an excellent relative accuracy, but not an excellent uh, absolute accuracy. So uh, that difference could be a couple of feet. So uh, uh, in the U.S. more than a meter, I think in in Europe about about 70 centimeters. So that's something to be uh, to be aware of. So if you want to use your precise point positioning coordinates uh, and convert them to a easting northing height uh, coordinate system, you would have to do a transformation first to bring it into to NAD or, or ETRS, and then use the uh, the map projection. Um, let me show you how that works. So. Uh, for instance, as an example, I will load some data like this, and uh, this is uh, this is a full day of data, 30 second interval. For precise point positioning, uh, 30 seconds is uh, is okay. Probably a minute would would have been okay as well. Don't use uh, one one second. That's there's no there's no need to use uh, a one second interval. That's that's you know one second interval is useful for for kinematic for stop and go, but but not for static. You'll only cr create a lot of data, big files, and your processing will be slow. So 30 seconds is uh, is enough. So what I'll do then is compute. No, wait a minute. What I would first have to do is, um, because I need, as I explained before, clock corrections and also precise orbits, I would say search for uh, space segment data. So now, and this is, this is done automatically, precise orbits for my data and, and, and clock corrections for my data are, uh, are downloaded. So 
so we're done so I've selected this file and then I say compute precise so it's a full day of, uh, of data but the uh, the processing goes uh, goes fairly quick so then uh, I will have my uh, my result here so for this station let's let's zoom to see where it is it's somewhere in uh, in Pennsylvania uh, so uh, so this is my result this latitude and longitude that's a latitude and longitude uh, on ITRF that's the uh, the reference uh, system that I uh, mentioned before so that is that is different from from NAD so uh, let me load the same file again like this and then you can see the uh, then you can see the uh, the difference especially if we would change this into uh, Pennsylvania coordinate system you can see that that the post processing uh, result or the PPP result is actually a couple of feet off not because it's not accurate because it's it's in this case we have a full day of excellent data so it's actually has a centimeter accuracy but the reason that it is uh, a couple of feet off is because it's in a different reference uh, frame so how do we uh, how do we fix that um, we fix that with a uh, transformation so we have to use a transformation to get our precise point result into our local datum and uh, we go to uh, a special site that's mentioned here in the release notes over here National Geodetic Survey and we'll select this option and we'll do, do it for just for this point uh, only so then it says here what is the reference frame for the input value so the input value would be my precise positioning result uh, and that will be ITRF it's actually ITRF 2014 in my case but let's say this is good enough and I want to transform to NAD which is this setting um, this is time dependent so the time is important so uh, the reference date of the input position it was measured in October so I have to enter the full date and then I'm gonna move to NAD and that's the realization of uh, as we see here 2011 so let's simply say January 2011 and then I will have to uh, to enter my my coordinates of my uh, point. So let's go back to uh, uh, geographic coordinates. Okay. So I'm going to enter this. Okay. So I've entered the coordinates and. Uh, then I will use the, the the velocity because it's 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 a time dependent transformation. I will use the uh, velocity from the NGS, and then I will say uh, do the calculation, and then we uh, we have this result. So I've uh, transformed transformed from ITRF to NAD. So this is ITRF and this is uh, NAD, and then um, when we look at this result we see that it's actually pretty accurate so uh, uh, it's uh, 48.200 it's the same as we have here and also this uh, 45976 45976 and also our uh, our height uh, 16525 and that's 24 so that's that's actually that's actually a centimeter uh, half an inch so um, so as you can see 
you can really get centimeter accuracy even on your uh, on your local datum. Now I realize that this procedure is a little bit complicated, so that means you know you're not you're not going to do this do this transformation for all. 25 points of your survey so the use of precise point positioning is really in a specific situation you're in the middle of nowhere and you need to have an, uh, an accurate or a couple of accurate uh, coordinates uh, then you can use precise uh, point positioning and as you can see if you want to have it in a, in a local datum then with this transformation uh, procedure you can also get centimeter accuracy on the local datum.